Danger, Dr. Danfield. Your brother is there on the cot, Miss Emma. <gasps> but why is he covered with that sheet? I'm sorry. I tried to explain. Clint? Clint! He's dead. You killed him! You murdered him! Dr. Daniel Danfield, authority on crime psychology, has an unhappy faculty for getting himself mixed up in hazardous predicaments because of his astonishing revelations regarding the workings of the criminal mind. Today's story opens in the reception room of the Hillside Trade Hospital. A young lady, Brenda Emmett by name, is just entering. Yes? Good morning. I'm Brenda Emmett. I'd like to see my brother Clint. Oh, uh, we didn't expect you until next week, Miss Emmett. Not having heard from you about Clint, I... I became worried and decided to come in town today. I realize I've been lax in my payments, but is Clint all right? Why, uh, just a moment, please. Yes? Miss Brenda Emmett is here, Professor Hensler. She came to see her brother. Brenda Emmett? I thought... She became worried about her brother, decided to come in town today. I see. Very well. Send her in. Yes, sir. You go in, please. Professor Hensler will see you. Thank you. My dear Miss Emmett, how nice it is to see you again. Good morning, Professor Hensler. I'd like to see Clint, if I may. Of course, uh, but do sit down a moment. You must be tired after your long trip. If you don't mind, I'd rather not. I'd like to see Clint now. Oh, yes, of course, of course. However, I think it might be best if you rested Professor here... Professor Hensler, are you trying to tell me that Clint isn't well? Well, my dear Miss Emmett, your brother was far from well when you entered him in our institution. That's not true. Clint was in perfect physical condition. I'm sorry. It is not my policy to enter into discussions about my patients with laymen. You must understand... Not your policy? What kind of nonsense is that? Oh, please, Miss Emmett. Your brother is not in a condition to receive visitors. Not in a condition? Then I... Your brother is a very sick man, Miss Emmett. Any undue excitement at this time might prove fatal. Fatal? I'm sorry that you have forced me to be so frank. I see... Professor Hensler, I don't intend to leave this building until I see Clint. I've already explained that that is impossible. Very well. You can prevent me from seeing Clint, but you can't stop me from going to the nearest police station. Marie! Yes? I warn you, Miss Emmett. You're making a mistake. I have done my best to spare you an unpleasant experience. Now I have no alternative. Really? Professor Hensler, I demand that you take me to him immediately. Very well. Follow me, please this door. Please understand, I hope to be able to spare you this. I know what I'm doing. Down this hall. Good oh, heavens, what's that? It's probably one of our more serious cases becoming violent. Serious cases, but now I Please thought... concern yourself only with the purpose of your visit, Miss Emmett. Here, please. Your brother is there on the cot. Why is he covered with that sheet? I'm sorry. I tried to explain. Clint! Clint! No. He's dead. Clinton Emmett died this morning following a heart attack resulting from severe mental stress. No. No, he didn't die. You killed him. You murdered him. He was all right when he came here, but you killed Please, him. Please, Miss Emmett, you don't realize what you're saying. You murdered him. He was all right, but you killed him. You murdered him. moment we'll return for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... And now back to Michael Dunn for the second act of... Danger, Dr. Danfield. Captain Otis, there must be something you can do. Believe me, Miss Emmett, I wish there were. Professor Hensler's so-called trade hospital is a new idea in caring for the mentally deficient. But you do suspect him of running a racket. I am not in a position to express an opinion on the matter. My brother was murdered, deliberately murdered. Isn't there a law in this state that punishes murders, Captain Otis? Naturally. Miss Emmett, have you any evidence that uh, would prove your brother was deliberately murdered? Yes. He was in perfect physical health when I entered him in the hospital six months ago. Isn't that enough? I'm afraid not. You see... Uh, Excuse me... Yes? Dr. Danfield and Miss Fairfax are here, Captain Otis. Oh, yes. Ask them to wait a few... No, no, just a minute. Uh, Ask them to come in right away, please. Yes, sir. 
Uh, possibly there is an answer to this, Miss Emmett. Have you ever heard of Dr. Daniel Danfield? Yes, of course. He lectures on unusual types of criminal minds, doesn't he? Mm, not only lectures, but studies unusual types at close range. Now, uh, possibly... Oh, here, here they are now. Oh, how are you, Doc? Miss Fairfax? Hello, Captain Otis. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Your secretary said... No, no, no. Come in, please. Uh, Miss Emmett, I want you to meet Miss Rusty Fairfax and uh, Dr. Danfield. How do you do? How do you do? Miss Emmett? Miss Emmett has just had an unpleasant experience. Her brother died suddenly at the Hillside Trade Hospital. Oh, what a shame. Hillside? Isn't that the new theory school established by a Professor Adolf Hensler? Yes, uh, Hensler advanced the theory that many of the less serious mental cases could be cured by a series of shock treatments, plus the idea of teaching them a trade. I was one of those who read his advertisements. My brother Clint wanted to go to the hospital, so I somehow raised the money to send him, and they killed him. Why do you say that, Miss Emmett? I think Hensler deliberately planned Clint's death. I think he did it by not treating Clint in the manner that would bring about his recovery. Why, that's worse than murder. What do you think, Dan? Dan. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Just what were you thinking about, Dan Danfield? Got something in mind, Doc? Possibly, Captain. Rusty, how would you like to become Mrs. Danfield? Dan! Uh, for a couple of days, I mean. Oh. Now, wait a minute, Doc. I can guess what you have in mind. A deal like that would be pretty dangerous. What did, Captain? I've heard a lot about this Professor Hensler. I'd like to meet him. Come along, Mrs. Danfield. You're going to take your husband to the hospital. Good morning. Is there something I can do for you? Yes. I'm Mrs. Daniel Danfield, and this is my husband. I want to enter him in your hospital. Really? What seems to be the trouble? Well, ever since Mr. Danfield was discharged from the service, he's uh, had a complete lack of interest in everything. Really? The way he's looking at me, I wouldn't say he was troubled with a lack of interest. I beg your pardon. Dan, are of you... Of course not. The young lady is jumping to conclusions. So are you, brother, if you think you're pulling a fast one. Oh? Just what do you mean by that? I mean, you're no more sick than I am. Now, scram. I'm busy. I resent that. My husband needs mental stimulation. Take him home. Tell him a bedtime story. All what? that guy needs is a course on how to put on an act and get away with it. What? Rusty, I think we're wasting our time talking to this young lady. The chances are she couldn't even take a pulse. Come on, let's go find out old penciler. You can't go in there. That's the professor's private office. We can read, nurse. This sign is printed in English. Come on, Mrs. D. Let's go. What's the meaning of this? Are you Adolf Hensler? Yes. Didn't the nurse explain that I'm never to be interrupted? Come out of there, you two. Uh, Miss Derwood, will you kindly tell me who these people are? No, no, let me. My name is Dan Field, and this is my wife. I'm a sick man, Professor He's Hensler. He's no more sick than I am. I can see he isn't. Now, if Just you... a minute. I don't know whether I'm sick or not. Our hospital is entirely filled, and even if it weren't, we are not interested in cases of your type. Well, it's time you were. I demand attention. <laughs> Heavens, what's that? That's none of your business. Now, get out. No, Professor, I'm staying. Oh, yes? We'll see about that. Take it easy. Be careful, Professor Hensler. My husband becomes violent when aroused. Get out, I said! You don't have to yell. I'm not deaf. Now then, I'm sure when I explain the nature Miss of my trouble... Miss you... Derwood! Yes, I understand, Professor. Boys? You want us, Miss Derwood? Come in, boys. I have a job for you. Okay, boss. Come on, Butch. Damn. They're giants. Yes, yes, I see they are, Rusty. A couple of your professors, Hensler? Yes, a couple of my professors. Show these people how you teach unruly students, boys. Just a minute, boys. Keep away from me. Outside with him, boys. Are you all right? Oh, I guess so. My dignity seems to be hurt more than anything else. Oh, those, 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 those brutes. Yes, weren't they? Well, our idea ended rather ignominiously, didn't it? I guess we were lucky we escaped with only being thrown out of the place. What are we going to do now? I don't know. One thing I'm sure of. Hensler has gotten away with this racket he's pulling long enough. I'll always be haunted by the sound of that scream we heard. So will I, Rusty. Well, I have to think up some new plan. Dan, look over there. Those people sitting around on the lawn must be some of Professor Hensler's so-called patients. Yes. They look pretty unhappy about it, too. Suppose we go over and have a talk with them, Rusty. Maybe we can learn something of interest. Now, I doubt that Hensler would allow them the freedom of the lawn if they were capable of telling us any of the things we want to know. That's something I'll be very much interested in finding out. <laughs> Mm, 
You're quite sure about that, Miss Durwood? I'm positive, Professor. That man was Dr. Dan Danfield, the crime psychologist. Hmm. Strange he should come here. Why? He makes a business of studying unusual types of criminals. Careful, Miss Durwood. I do not like your implication. Sorry, Professor Hensler. There is uh, no doubt in my mind that this Dan Denfield is a sick man. I am surprised that you did not notice the advanced state of his condition. But I... Yes. I am sure Mr. Denfield will benefit greatly by one of our treatments. But you already explained to him that our enrollment... The enrollment at the Hillside Hospital is never too filled but what we can take care of an unusually serious case, Miss Stewart. Uh, Please remember that. Yes, sir, I understand. Splendid. Now, um, if you will ask the boys uh, to step into my office, I would like to discuss with them the uh, nature of the treatment we shall prescribe for Mr. Denfield. (laughs) Yes, indeed. I think we can cure Mr. Denfield of his illness permanently. In a moment, we'll return for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... Now back to our star, Michael Dunn, for the third act of... Danger, Dr. Danfield. Oh, Dan, what a pitiful sight. They're just sitting there, staring at nothing as though... As though they didn't care. Yes. Let's talk to this youngster here. Hello, young man. How are you getting along? Huh? What? What's your name, son? Name? Dan, he doesn't even know what you're talking about. I see he doesn't. Possibly he's a war veteran. Perhaps if I mention the war, it will mean something. Uh, What outfit were you with, son? Outfit? Yes, yes, you know, the Army. Or perhaps you were in the Marines. Don't know. Oh, this is awful. It couldn't be much worse, could it? Oh, wait a minute. Don't go away, young man. Oh, no. Hospital. Marine. I, I feel so badly I could cry. Oh, I don't blame you, Rusty. Well, that explains one thing, doesn't it? What do you mean? I mean that now I understand this Hensler's record. He knows that the one thing that will cure these people is to give them something to do. Something to occupy their minds. Are you saying that he deliberately refuses to give them the things to do? That's exactly what I'm saying, Rusty. Oh. The result is inevitable. Their condition grows worse instead of better. There's nothing more deadly to physical health than mental depression. And by doing that, Hensler can keep them here at his phony school and continue to collect the tuition money. Yes. However, if we could prove that at least one of Hensler's patients died as a result of his lack of treatment... Oh, Dan, how can anyone be so cruel? People who are greedy for money, my dear, can be cruel. Well... Now, look who's coming. Dan, it's Hensler and his gorillas. Let's get out of here. No, no, wait, Rusty. By the expression on Hensler's face, he's uh, had a change of heart. How fortunate you did not leave, Mrs. Denfield. I have good news for you. What is it? Uh, We have decided to enter your husband as a patient at Hillside Faith Hospital. Well, what a lucky break for me. Happily, Mrs. Denfield, one of our patients has uh, been discharged. Now, if you will both come up to the office and sign the commitment papers... Commitment papers? Uh, there is a certain formality that we must follow, Mr. Denfield. It would be necessary for your wife to, uh, uh, shall we say, place you in our care. No, I've decided against it. Dan doesn't... Oh, yes, I do, Rusty. This is my big opportunity. Come along now and sign the papers. Right? No, Dan! Your husband seems to appreciate the value of a course at our institution much more than you, Mrs. Denfield. Indeed I do, Rusty. I'm surprised at your attitude. Uh, but, Dan... Immediately after you sign the papers, you can call on my friend Captain Otis... Tell him how lucky I was to get into Hensler's hospital. All right, Denfield. You can stand up now. Very well. What's the verdict? I regret to have to inform you that your condition is much more serious than I at first supposed. Oh, indeed? And uh, just what do you think the trouble is? To put it crudely, Denfield... You're mentally off base. Now, wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me I'm crazy? As a bat. In fact, I find it necessary to confine you to our violent ward for an indefinite period. Penciler, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Oh? Yes. In the first place, you're making a criminal out of yourself when you go around pronouncing people crazy who aren't. In the second place, this is supposed to be a trade hospital, not an institution for the insane. No, you're quite wrong, Dan Helan. Both counts. You should have read more carefully the papers 
that your wife signed. Oh, so that's it, is it? <laughs> You're clever, Hensler, but I'm not buying any part of it. I'm getting out of here. No, I'm not getting anywhere. Well, no, try and stop it. Did you ring for us, boss? Yes, I did, boys. Uh, will you please show Mr. Denfield to the violent ward? Okay, boss. Now, wait a minute, you two gorillas. I'm... Watch out! That's right, boys. Work him over a bit first, so he'll know he means business. Okay, okay boss. Hensler, I'll... Uh, you big ape, I'll... Oh, you lousy... Oh. Yeah, very neatly done, boys. Pick him up and carry him downstairs. Yeah. Okay, boss. If he comes to and gets violent again, wake him over some more. You bet, boss. We'll fix him up. Uh, down the stairs, Butch. Take it easy. Yeah, yeah, I got him. Here, hold him while I unlock the door, Butch. Okay. Drop him on the cot. Yeah, yeah. Think I ought to sock him again? No, no, he's out like a light. Come on. Hey. Hey, pal. Boy, we got a job on him, all right. I'll get some water. Wake up. Yeah, still out. Now, if I can throw this water through the bars. <coughs> hey, who threw that water? I did, pal. You needed it. You. Oh. Oh, my head. And, uh, worked you over, did they, chum? Who, who are you? Name of Gus Magnus. Enrolled as a patient at Hensler's Hospital. What's your name, pal? Uh, Dan Danfield. What's your trouble? Nothing, nothing. I I got in here so I could find out what was really going on. So did I. Hensler made a mistake when he signed me. Oh? Yeah. I'm an ex-paratrooper. A couple of my friends are here. I intend to get them out. I see. Tell me, uh, Gus, uh, how does it happen you're locked up in this cell instead of being allowed the freedom of the law? Why, ain't you heard... I'm what is known as a violent case. Oh? Yeah, violent. Seems, uh, Hensler had a few rules I objected to. So he tossed me in here to ready me up for the lawn. Ready you up? Yeah. You see, it's like this. Some of the guys who get sucked in on this deal is pretty bad, and some of them ain't. Like me, see? Well, those guys who act dopey are turned out on the lawn so the folks passing by can see them. Looks kind of nice, see? Yes, I'm beginning to. And uh, what happens to boys like you, Gus? Why, Dan, ain't you guessed? We're tossed in here. And once a day, the docks boys come down and sort of work us over. And after a while, we're ready for the lawn. Get it? Incredible. How long have you been here, Gus? Me? Oh, I've only been in a week. But I'm leaving tonight. Leaving? <laughs> I must say you're rather philosophical about it. It ain't got nothing to do with that uh, philosophy. It's got to do with a little gimmick me and my pals dreamed up. Your pals? Yeah. You see, there's four of us down here. Well, tonight, when the boys come down for the evening workout, they're going to get a little surprise. Gus, uh, how about letting me join your little surprise party? Why, sure, Dan, sure. We got to stick together. I wish you'd brought along a squad car full of policemen, Captain Otis. Hensler has a whole gang of strong-armed men. Now, just a minute, Miss Fairfax. As far as I know, this Hensler hasn't done anything of a criminal nature. And until he does, I haven't any right to make any demands on him at all. Hasn't done anything of a criminal nature? Well, don't you call holding Dan there against his will criminal? Well, from what you told me, the doc entered the hospital of his own free will. As a matter of fact, he practically forced his way in. Turn in this driveway. 
But you don't see, Captain Otis. Stan only wanted to get in to get evidence that will put Hensler where he belongs. Yes, I understand that. Still, until he gets that evidence... Oh, he'll get it all right. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, well, I hope so. Well, let's go in and have a talk with Professor Hensler. Something you wanted? Yes. I'm uh, Captain Otis from police headquarters. I'd like to see Professor Hensler. Police headquarters? I'm sorry. Professor Hensler isn't in right now. Don't believe her, Captain Otis. She's lying. I beg you. Oh, it's Mrs. Danfield. Yes, and I want to see my husband. Well, come back later, dearie. We don't allow visitors to see newly committed patients for at least two weeks. Oh, you don't? Well, I'm going to see him. Uh, something wrong, Miss Dewar? That's Professor Hensler. Mrs. Danfield insists on seeing her husband, doctor. She brought a policeman with her. Policeman? Well, I'm sorry to bother you, Professor Hensler. I'm Captain Otis. Mrs. Danfield wanted to see her husband and asked me to come along. To frighten me into breaking the rules that I believe are necessary to the proper conduct of my hospital, no doubt. Sorry, we do not break the rules for anybody. You're going to this time. I want to see Dan. You're holding him here against his will. My dear Mrs. Danfield, you amuse me. Come back in two weeks' time, and I'll be glad to show you your husband. Make him let us see Dan, Captain Otis. I'm sorry, Mrs. Danfield, but under the circumstances, I'm afraid there's nothing that I can do. Captain, you're a smart man. Now, if you'll excuse me... Wait a minute. There's no institution in the world that doesn't permit visitors. Waiting two weeks is ridiculous. I'm afraid, Mrs. Denfield, that you failed to read the commitment papers that you signed this morning. Commitment papers? What's that, Professor Hansler? There's no need for alarm. Just some of my assistants target practicing. What are they doing? Accusing people for targets? Hensler, that sounds bad to me. I think I... Stay right where you are, Captain Otis. You too, Mrs. Denfield. Miss Derwood. I know what the trouble is. Yes, sir. Just a minute. Come back here. Don't move, Captain. I'll shoot. So will I. I've got a gun, too. Why, you... All right, Hensler, you asked for it. Captain Otis, the girl's gone. Never mind her. Come on. It looks as though you were right. But what about him? Ah, Don't worry. He'll keep. It's coming from... It's coming from down those stairs. Yes, yes. Now, careful now. We want to surprise them if we can. Go ahead, you guys. Come out with your hands up or we'll blast you to kingdom come. Stop talking and come in and get us if you think you can. Oh, boy, Jen. Come on, you bumps. That second voice was there. Yeah, stay here, Miss Fairfax. I'm going down these stairs. I'm coming, too. All right, you guys. You asked for it. Here we come. Start shooting, foot. This is it. Yeah, let them come. We're coming. All right, you men. Drop those guns. Why, you dirty... Come on, Butch. Come on, stop. Dan, stop. Dan. Stop where you are. Rusty. In a moment, we'll return for the conclusion of our story, but first... Now back to Michael Dunn for the conclusion of... Danger, Dr. Danfield. Have another cup of coffee, Captain Otis? Uh, yes, I will. Thank you. There you are. How about you, Dan? Yes, yes, please, Rusty. Of course. Uh, I think we're all suffering from a bit of nervous tension. Uh, it's good to relax. Well, go on with the story, Doc. What happened after your friend Gus got you and the others out of the cell? Well, we discovered, Captain, much to our chagrin, that Butch and his friends were armed. Unfortunately, we hadn't counted on that. So you took refuge in the storeroom under the stairs? Yes, Rusty. It looked pretty hopeless, despite our brave talk. If Captain Notice hadn't happened along just when he did, I doubt if I'd be here right now to tell about it. Well, it's over now, and we've done a good job. Oh, Doc, I've got to hand it to you. If you hadn't had the nerve to pose as a patient in Hensler's hospital, there's no telling how many lives you might have wrecked. Now, without the aid of the police, I'd have gotten nowhere, Captain. Tell me, uh, what made you change your mind about interfering? Oh, I think you know the answer to that one, Doc. And so do I. It was the commitment papers. Hensler thought he was in the clear because uh, Dan's wife had signed them. That's right. The Doc didn't have a wife, which uh, made the papers null and void. And uh, whose fault is that? Well, uh, I... uh, 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 Don't answer, Rusty. I'll uh, take it up with you later. 